Welcome to the Behind the Art Inspiration podcast, a sneak peek into the studio practices of all types of artists, conversations for artists, and for fans of artists who are sophisticated and savvy. I'm your host, Caroline Carp. Let's get to it. Well, hello, everyone. This is episode number 14 of the Behind the Art Inspiration podcast. In this episode, I'll be virtually traveling from my Safety Harbor, Florida studio, due west to Eugene, Oregon, and into the digital photography studio of Susan Detroit. Hi. How are you doing, Susan? Um, thank you so much for being here. And I asked you how you were, and then I interrupted you. So tell us how you are. <laughs> um, I'm... Uh... It's Sunday. It's pretty relaxed. It's raining, which is really usual in Eugene. And I'm happy to be here talking with you. Great. So my, my very first question is, I, I introduced you as a digital artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that some people may not know exactly what that means. So if you could talk about that a little bit, that would be great. Well, Digital usually means something to do with uh, technology, but mainly I'm a mobile artist, um, which is part of the digital world. Um, digital can mean like digital cameras or computers or things that are made with digital equipment. But um, recently I am a mobile uh, phone artist, camera artist, and I use my iPad like this and the phone that I'm talking to you on at this moment to create art. So it's made in, um, in the digital world because things come into the iPhone and to the iPad. And then I work with those, I, with those digitally produced, uh, captures images and manipulate those on my iPad. Now, as you're talking about that, I'm thrown back to my 20s, or actually maybe my te late teens, early 20s, to when I was in um, art school, and we had our photographers that uh, I would have classes with, and, and I also took photography, but manipulation back then was like, I know this one, this one artist that would take images with a Polaroid. Yes. And then he would take that Polaroid image and he would scratch into it and manipulate in that way. And I do know that you could manipulate in the dark room. Yes. Right? But what you're doing is all done with apps. Yes. Okay. I did both of those things. I have done Polaroid manipulation. I started my journey on um, manipulating photography pretty much started in an alternative photography class at the University of Oregon when I was uh, returned to school in a graduate program. Mm -hmm. And it that's really the seed of it, that desire to manipulate things and change how they are. And I took a lot of alternative photography classes, but then this recent rendition of manipulating is for me about six years old but it really has its basis in that learning of layering and manipulating and using alternative photography processes and yeah. another thing that i've noticed about you because i've been studying you is um your connection with uh yourself i mean quite honestly like self-portraiture and um can you talk about when you turn the camera on yourself um I would say I dramatically turned the camera on myself about four years ago. <clears throat> Before that, I did use analog um, uh, cameras and I have a lot of work that I turned the camera towards myself in mirrors and shadows. But really about four years ago, I um, was having a lot of feelings about aging. Well, the feeling started before four years ago, but it was in that period of four to five years ago that it came into my mind that I could do something 
about what was in my head. <clears throat> it took me a little while to get to that place. And then something in me, probably from all the artwork I've seen or somebody else, something in me uh, decided instead of suffering and are feeling like I'm suffering with those thoughts, how about I just look directly at it? And so I started taking pictures of myself in this kind of naive way, but directly of my face and exploring that. And then as my um, time in the mobile photography world exploded and it really did explode for me. And I started noticing what other people, mostly a lot of women were doing, manipulating their own image. I, I just went on a journey and started that giant series that I have, The Portrait of a Woman, that's basically mm -hmm. focused and began, the seed of it was um, women and aging and my own feelings about aging and just to keep looking at it and being present in that, yeah. Right, and, and I noticed that you were bringing in nature, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the word is, but maybe melding. Yeah leaves and and your image it was it was quite interesting to like look for your image in the nature that you were photographing yes Do you have an example of that oh an example of that to show oh yes i do i i oh, brought one of the most um i don't know how the reflection is on this this is one yeah. of the most popular images that i made of myself with a leaf Yes. Let me get it straight there. It's called um, Leaf Life. And this is a hard copy reproduction of a digitally created image. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and um, just the nature part of it really stems from my long term life love of nature and the environment. I um, was studied botany. Uh, when I returned to graduate school, I was always interested in life forms as a young child. And I also have studied um, plants and birds, at, not in a university way, but classes and workshops, bird watching, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And what is what is the process? So now you move into the digital world. So that piece that you just showed us. Yeah. What is the process of producing that? Like, okay, that's that's a good question and um, one that I like to answer. Okay. <laughs> I have a, I take portraits of myself in all kinds of places, and I actually mentioned this to Carolyn that I think of I think of myself as having two studios. I have this hard walled studio, and then I mm -hmm. I feel like the outdoors is my studio because. I take pictures of myself hiking when I'm hiking in my backyard, whatever place I begin to realize I want to have a portrait of myself. So I have a huge number of those. Mostly I do those in black and white with mm. a app called Blackie, my favorite black and white app. I, I store those in my phone or on my iPad. And I also constantly take pictures outdoors hiking in my yard. I Now if I can get myself over to the Skinner's Butte and I have leaves and, and sunsets and all kinds of things that I keep on my phone or on my iPad. And then when I feel so moved, I um, go in and I use apps and I start melding and uh, uh, compositing mostly melding for that series, but sometimes compositing, which means individual pieces on top. But, um, and I have a many, many apps that I might try and many things that I go through, many renditions before I believe it's final. Sometimes it happens really fast. Right. It'll just happen. Like with any art form, you'll go like, oh, my God, I think I'm done. And then sometimes I just it just goes on and it's just ugly and I don't like it. And so it it just changes. 
And sometimes it's really simple and lovely and other times it feels tedious. So how does it get off of the digital world and into oh. the physical world? Um, into that canvas? Oh, I uh, produce a uh, JPEG or a PNG mm -hmm. and I either send it to a local lab or a lab on the through the internet and it comes back to me in a box <laughs> as a hard copy canvas and I um, produced them in the before COVID I mostly showed my work as hard copies like big canvas pieces like this one that's right behind me and um, but now I'm not showing in real time so I would order them and I have a particular place that I like the most, but it, um, and sometimes I will order them as um, metal print. Yes. This okay. is a metal print. Wow. It's and hard to you're see. In there. I what? see you. I see you, but people are going to have to play Where's Susan in that. Um, well, that's part mm -hmm. of the, that, yes. Uh, some, yes. And I think that that is part of my personality that, and my pers my art personality is sometimes I feel fine being obvious, but I often like the obscure. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't like the obscure, that's fine. <laughs> but I I like to I I like the idea that it's obscure and there's layers there, and you have to spend a little time with the work. Like it, like any artwork, really, it, we, we want to have the viewer spend time with us. Right. And see their own ideas and story reflected. And um, I really, I know that my work, because I've talked to people that look at my pieces, they find things that I don't see when I'm making it. Yeah. You you know I, how that I works. That. <laughs> and 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 it's fun to have that happen. And so I try not to always give all the information about what's in my head, but sometimes with a title, you can kind of get the idea of what I'm thinking. But right. So do you ever do any dark room work anymore? Do dark rooms exist? They do exist. There are some analog uh, dark rooms uh, where they were before COVID and I don't know um, if they still exist and there was a group that I gave some of my equipment to but I no, that's not going to happen <laughs> I, I have still have tons of negatives and uh, mm. I, I toy with the idea sometimes of uh, digitizing those negatives so I can play with them and I've done that a little bit but no um, I'm not I'm not going back in a dark room. Mm -mm. So is your um, your selfies series that's ongoing or is that something that's ending and you're moving into something else? What do you um, think? I think that it will probably go on. But, and right now I'm uh, considering what I'm going to do for 2021. Mm. And I the word I have for 2021 is collaboration. Ah. Yeah. And I have some ideas and I'm not going to tell you my best idea yet because I'm still, I'm kind of holding it back because yeah. I'm not, you know how that is. Like you have yeah. an idea and think, oh, this could be good. Yeah. So um, the idea I have will uh, incorporate this, the techniques that I've been using. Um, and I, well, I'll, I'll be wanting to do, I'll just give this tidbit. I'm wanting to do collaboration that involves people in real time and virtual time. So. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm letting my, I'm allowing myself right now the time for the idea to simmer, mm. which I haven't done that a lot in my, usually I, start and I just take off and right. and I'm really letting it simmer quite a bit this time because I can because <laughs> I I can and I'm I 
and I think it's important to say the other thing that I'm doing right now in the collaboration idea is that I'm doing some volunteer, I'm helping some other organizations because I'm simmering right now and um, I'm helping the Whitaker Community Arts Task Force uh, put together something locally. And um, I also helped a group that works with autistic people. And I just, um, I, I felt like I needed that in my life. I, I lived by myself and, you know, I've been isolating a lot through the pandemic. And I realized in the, in January, 1st of January, I, I, I want to do something different. And so I started including that in, in my um, collaboration idea. Nice. Yeah. Well, Susan, where I have it in the show notes, but can you tell us where people can find your work? Um, I post regularly on Instagram and Facebook and mm -hmm. I have a portfolio online portfolio of my work, all the different series I've done in my lifetime. I have five of a series, including the digital work. And also I have a YouTube channel. Ah, yes. I, where I talk about the way that I work. And I also, I'm gonna do another little teaser. Okay. Which is, um, I'm working, I'm, I produced a film, a 49 minute film during the pandemic. And I'm creating short, a short series that is going to be revealed at some time in the next month or two of uh, related to the pandemic films. Like uh, maybe there'll be 10 of them videos. I, very exciting. Yeah, thanks. Well, Susan, I want to thank you so much um, for being here <laughs> with me. And I want to thank everyone that's watching so much for watching and listening as I share. In March of 2020, I had a vision of starting the International Online Art Collective, which Susan is a part of. She's a founding member. Uh, we're a di diverse group of artists from around the world who value the power of art to inspire, provoke, and heal. The power of this group is in connection and connections like these. And from this, a podcast is born first interviewing these artists and then branching out to all types of artists. And hey, I just wanna mention that I'll be hosting a virtual gathering to release my newest collection, Sales, Souls and Sparkles. And it's a solo art show coming up on February 20th that I'd love for you guys to come to. It's another opportunity to gather yet apart but together um, for a fantabulous cultural experience. So um, if you're interested in that, give me a message and I'll give you a link to that. Um, but uh, thank you again, Susan, and to all the people who are here watching Susan, hello. And stay right there, Susan. I'm gonna end the broadcast and we can chat a little bit, little bit longer. And I just, I would like to say thank you. It's yeah. been a pleasure and thank you for the work that you're doing with the group. It's wonderful. Thanks. Mm -hmm.